People that are not focused on people, but they're focused on their calling, they've got a positive self-awareness, they've got positive self-esteem, they've got powerful self-control. You won't have to look for a resource, you will become resourceful. It's not always about the accomplishment, it's about the effort. If we can just keep the effort going, the excuse is irrelevant. For many of us, it's ministry. We've made it a lifestyle. We're always there for everybody else. And I just want to ask the question, and it's not an invitation into narcissism or to be egocentric or to be self-centered, but to get out of this self-sabotaging, self-destructive behavior. Why does everybody else get the best of your time and the best of your energy? Why is it that you are pointed and present and seated in the chairs to support everybody? But when it comes to you, you don't believe. You don't support you. Why can't you be the person that changes everything? And so we're, we're, we're just programmed to blame everybody else. When will you look in the mirror and stop comparing yourself to everybody else? And so there's no excuse, there's no pain, there's no dilemma, there are no speed bumps, there's no distraction that can turn me off. I'm not a light switch. You can't turn me off. I want this thing every single day. If it's important to you, you're gonna find a way. You won't have to look for a resource, you will become resourceful. It's not always about the accomplishment, it's about the effort. If we can just keep the effort going, the excuse is irrelevant. If it's going to happen, you're going to have to eliminate excuses. Truth is, everybody's got purpose, right? Everybody's got a dream. Everybody's got something they have to pass or achieve or become. But we are generationally programmed to love convenience. And the truth of the matter is, it is so convenient to make an excuse. If you can hear my voice, you've got work to do. You've got a destiny to fulfill. You've got a purpose to walk into. You've got a test to pass. You've got dots to connect. We all want to do something. We all want to be somebody. We all want to go somewhere. Rule number one, kill the comparison game. And so we're, we're, we're just programmed to blame everybody else. When will you look in the mirror and stop comparing yourself to everybody else? And so there's no excuse, there's no pain, there's no dilemma, there are no speed bumps, there's no distraction that can turn me off. I'm not a light switch. You can't turn me off. I want this thing every single day. If it's important to you, you're gonna find a way. You won't have to look for a resource. You will become resourceful. It's not always about the accomplishment. It's about the effort. If you can just keep the effort going, the excuses are relevant. You gotta be stronger than your excuses. Excuses don't get results. Now we've gotta go through the process of being stronger than our excuses. We get one opportunity to come this way. We get one shot, we got one life to live. Life is too short to make excuses. You got one life to live, it's time to get it done. Are you tired of just thinking about it? It's time to listen, it's time to focus. I'm talking to that single mother. I'm talking to that broken father. I'm talking to that widow. I'm talking to the one who lost a brother. I'm talking to the person who lost their mother, who lost their father, who almost lost their mind with tears in your eyes, with no money in your pocket, behind bars. I don't know who you are, where you're from, but get it done. What haven't you been able to accomplish? Is it financial? Is it relational? Is it your health? Is it mental? Is it spiritual? What has stopped you? What has haunted you? Why are you losing sleep over it? 10 times out of 10, whatever it is that you've been destined to do or become, 
if you haven't gotten it done, energy flows where focus goes. So what are you focused on? The problem with many of you is that you're focused on your fears. You're focused on the risk more than you are the reward. You're focused on the pain of the process more than you are the glory on the other side. You're listening to the wrong people. You're listening to the wrong voices. You are subscribed to the wrong programs of thinking. And so if you haven't been able to get it done, today marks the first day of the best days of your life. I'm talking to you, the person that there's been this insurmountable feat, this giant in your face. And the decisions that you've been making have not lined up with the goals that you have. So where focus goes, energy flows. It's time to pull that energy from fear. Pull that energy away from doubt, out of anxiety, out of insecurity, out of competition and comparison. If you're going to get it done, I need you to listen and focus. Over the course of my life, I've come to realize that in order to get things done, there are some things I've got to get over. And that's the problem with many of you, that you're not over the relationship gone bad. You're not over the job that you lost. You're not over the person that walked out of you, the people and the places where you've experienced trauma and anguish. You're not over it. You're not over the fear. You're not over the anxiety. You're not over the complacency and the complaining. And there are some things you're going to have to get over, get over. You haven't gotten it done because you're still grieving. And it happened five years ago. If you're going to get it done, you got to let some things go. The moment that you stop striving, the moment that you stop pressing, the moment that you stop fighting, you start dying. Just just keep going to the next level. Just keep climbing that staircase. Just keep going. Just keep going higher and higher. There's always more. And it's not about acquisition. It's about manifestation. What have I been destined to become? Get up. Get up. Wake up. There's always another level. And it's not about beating the man or woman that's standing in the room with you. It's about beating the man and the woman that's in the mirror. Can you do better than you? Can you do better than you did yesterday? That's all I want to ask you. Can you do better? I'm just talking to that one. If this talk reaches one person, I'm talking to that one person that you may be tired, you may be broken, you may be hurting, People may have betrayed you, put their mouth on you, lied on you, left you, but you refuse to give up. There are going to be days when you are not going to feel like waking up. You are not going to feel like getting out of the bed. You are tired of yourself. You are tired of looking at the face in the mirror that you see. You are tired of maybe the way that your body looks or the money that you have or the people that you are connected to. There are going to be days when you are going to be tired of being you. You don't want to get out of bed. You don't want to talk to nobody. You don't want to think. You're so broken. It was so painful. It was so traumatic. The loss left you so hurt, so fractured, that you just get numb. You get cold, you get callous, and you don't want to move. Life would knock you flat on your back, blood in your nose. People would leave you in the cold. People that you gave everything to. And you got two options. You can give up or get up. You can have journals full of dreams. You can have vision boards from your front door to your bathroom. But if you don't count up the cost of what it's going to take, and if you are not willing to pay that price, you cannot have your future. I want you to get this mentality in your head. Every day, you pay. You pay. Forget waking up at 2 o'clock in the morning. You may have to lose sleep for a week. You may get two hours of sleep in seven days so that you can accomplish what it is that you've been destined to accomplish. What you were born to contribute to humanity. And so I know it hurts and I know it's expensive. Everything you need to get to this next level is inside of you. There's always another level. 
And if all we're thinking about is the goal and not valuing the journey and the growth that happens along the way, then we'll miss the moment. And when we miss the value in a moment, we lack momentum and we stay stagnant, seated in reverse. The measure of, of trauma and anguish and misery, it doesn't matter. If you are alive, you have another opportunity to begin again. What do you believe? Because it is our beliefs that determine our behavior. If I can't change my outputs, everything that's coming in, everything that I believe, everything that I see will determine what I do. If I can't do it, if I haven't done it, if it seems impossible and I won't even try, then something's off with my belief system. For years, decades, generations, families will struggle. And struggle is passed down poverty, scarcity, and lack, and losing. And I just want to ask anybody listening to me, why not you? Why can't you be the person that changes everything? The problem with many of you is that you're surrounded by people who ask you the wrong questions. Why do you sweat? Why can't you be the one that makes history? Why can't you be the one that wins again? Why can't you be the one that breaks cycles? Why can't you be the one that overcomes the demons that have haunted a family? For generations. I don't know, maybe you're that person listening to me that's always there for everybody else. They text you, you're there. They email you, you're there. They come over, they knock on your door. Unexpected, uninvited. And you just make yourself available for them. You're the type of person where other people call you sliding down the wall saying, I can't do this, I can't push, I can't fight, I'm tired, I'm weary. Nothing's working and you do it for free. It's gratis work. It's philanthropy. For many of us, it's ministry. We've made it a lifestyle. We're always there for everybody else. And I just want to ask the question, and it's not an invitation into narcissism or to be egocentric or to be self-centered, but to get out of this self-sabotaging, self-destructive behavior not believing in yourself, not showing up for yourself, not putting it in for yourself. Why not you? But when it comes to you, you don't believe. You don't support you. You don't invest in you. You don't believe you. You don't see it for you. When you don't believe in yourself, it's disempowering, it's self-sabotaging, it's self-destructive. You've got to stop waiting for the opportunity to come along and you've got to learn to master the art and the privilege of creating the opportunity. What is the vision? What is the aim? What is the target? What is the assignment? And do you believe? Because when you believe, nobody can convince you otherwise. There is no tomorrow. There is no plan B. I am completely devoted to my level one priority. The difference between the man that gets it done and the man that does not is that one man is focused on his history. He's focused on where he has failed and he's immersed and immobilized by it. No matter the odds, he's completely devoted to this idea that I'm not what I used to be. And I'm not where I want to be. But I have the opportunity and the privilege and the capacity to develop, to go and become something, to evolve, to move from point A to point B. And even though my end game, my target may be S or Z, I know I'm here at C. And I know in order to go from C to E, I need to touch D. If we go back to scripture in the book of Genesis, we'll discover where God said, let 
there be light. He spoke it. Many of you have been listening and taking notes. But you've got to start speaking this thing. Marcus, I've heard this a million times, but the more I speak it, the more I believe it. And the more I believe it, the more potential I can tap into. And the more potential I tap into, the more action I'll take. The more action I take, the more results that I get. And the more results that I get, the more I believe. And the more I believe, the more potential I get. The more potential I tap into. We have an unlimited amount of potential in us. It's called stored up potential. And the only way to unlock stored up potential is to believe. And so as I believe in me, as I put it all on the table, as I put all my chips in, as I leave it all on the floor, as I completely commit to me, as I completely commit to the goal at hand, and people, fathers and mothers make the same mistakes until the one shows up. Until the one shows up that changes everything. Why? Not me. Type it in the comments. Why? Not me. You've got everything you need to go to the next level, to obliterate glass ceilings and move forward. All you got to do is take one step and you're no longer where you are and you're no longer where you used to be. Just take a step forward. You've got enough zeal and fire and vigor and vitality. You are a person of vision and valor and discipline. You got this thing. Why? Not you. Stop looking for everybody else to do it. Stop looking for everybody else to support it. Believe in it, to hand it to you, to point you in the right direction. You have everything you need right now in this moment to take a step forward. So do it. You're talented enough. You're hungry enough. Do it. Do it. And as you build and as you scale and as you create and as you grow and as you believe and as you launch, everyone that is assigned to you and assigned to your purpose and your destiny will show up. Build it and they will come. I need you to send this video to every organization, every person, every team, everybody who has ever struggled with believing that it's you. It's always been you. You are the first pick. You are the only option. And there will never be another way. Believe that you're that valuable. Before you can shock the world, you need to shock yourself. Unlock that store potential. Take action. Get results. And teach others how to do the same. I would rather tell the world what I've done than what I'm going to do. There's enough people talking. Just make the move and don't talk until it's time for the checkmate. Move in silence. One of the most underrated superpowers on earth is moving in silence, thinking in silence, caucusing in silence, meditating, praying, working on your craft, doing the dark work behind the scenes where nobody can see it, nobody can congratulate you, nobody can affirm you, nobody can celebrate you. I'm doing this thing not to be celebrated. I'm doing this thing not to be noticed and acknowledged and supported. I'm doing this thing because if I don't do this, I'm not going to achieve what it is that I'm after. This is the power of moving in silence. If I'm going to move in silence, I've got to know how to plan in silence and think in silence and meditate and pray and put the work in behind the scenes. Nobody can see it but me. Every rising star that you see, every innovator and trailblazer and creator and philanthropist and minister and business person or athlete or entertainer, 
We see them at this height, but we don't see the work. You were not there when they cried and they bled and they sweat and they almost quit and they almost threw in the towel and they were left alone to continue the work, to pray, to believe, to think, to caucus, to plan it out and then execute and come back and shock everybody! I'm not gonna say a word until I win. I'm not posting about it. I'm not trying to prep you. You don't need a trailer. I'm going to make an announcement that I won. Not that I'm working, but I won. Checkmate. Checkmate. Somebody shout checkmate. Somebody drop it in the comments. Checkmate. Move in silence. Drop it in the comments. Checkmate. 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 You talked about me, you doubted me, you deserted me, you left me for dead. Watch me checkmate. And I'm gonna do it in silence. As a matter of fact, I'm not gonna say a word until I win. There are seasons in life where we get to that need to be played and lived out like a chess game. Don't talk until it's time. A chess player does not talk until the time has come for the checkmate. Man, drop it in the checks. Checkmate, checkmate, checkmate. Stop talking about everything you want to do. Checkmate! Successful people have mastered the art of spending time alone. They understand the power and the leverage points when I get time with myself and I get in my head and I get in my heart and I understand my behaviors and my belief systems and my parameters and what I need to do and how I need to sow and where I need to send my energy and how I need to execute in the day. They understand it's a superpower. But everybody doesn't need to know what you're doing. And this is why we have so many copycats and knockoffs and counterfeits and frauds because you brought people along with you that were not in your inner circle along throughout your process while you were building it instead of just revealing it after it was already done. Because this is the type of season I'm about to step into. You talked about me, you doubted me, you deserted me, you left me for dead. Watch me checkmate, and I'm gonna do it in silence. As a matter of fact, I'm not gonna say a word until I win. Just show up and be finished with it. Stop telling the world every step of the process and you haven't won yet. Win, 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 and after you win, then let them interview you. Let the contracts drop on the table. Let the documentary come out, but win without a word. And when you win, checkmate, checkmate, checkmate. Understand your limitations. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? Where are you losing? Where are you winning? How do you need to change your beliefs to align with the correct behaviors? What type of behaviors and parameters and values do you need to have established and hardwired within yourself? Who do I need to become to accomplish what it is I've been destined to do? When you spend that time alone and you can think and you can pray and you can meditate, and everybody's not in your mix. You're able to grow something that could leave a legacy and impact the lives of millions of people. Never underestimate the power of getting alone with yourself and getting dialed in with what you've been called to do and then how you're going to go about doing it. Oftentimes we find the person who's living paycheck to paycheck doesn't want to think. They just want to work and get paid. It's the millionaires and billionaires and six-figure earners and networkers and busy bees and people that are out there shaking hands, stepping into rooms and arenas, building products, creating opportunity, innovators, trailblazers. These are the people that have spent time alone thinking about what it is they've been called to do and how they're going to execute. They moved in silence. They thought 
alone. They prayed alone just for a moment, just for a season. Nothing wrong with getting together with friends and family and having some a corporate construct, but there is an unfair advantage when I can get along with myself and I can talk to myself in the mirror and tell myself, self, you got stuff to do. Self, you have things to become. Self, there are ways you have to go about this and you need to be flexible, you need to be agile. Is God first in my house or nothing else? We start to establish our values and we start to understand ourselves and what makes us tick. Everybody doesn't need to know all the moving parts and the pain and the tears and the sacrifices that you have made. Just show up on stage and win and after you win, then you can talk about how you won. If your dream only requires you, then it's not big enough. It starts with you, but it doesn't end with you. Your team is coming. Drop it in the comments, man. My team is coming, but it starts with me. My team is coming, but it starts with me. My team is coming, but it starts with me.